I got your um, your email. I got your email. How are you doing? Hey guys, how are you? I feel like it's darker than usual. It's raining outside. Hey, how are you? Hey sister, how you doing? How was your day? How was your day? Pray your day was good. Pray your day was good. We're just gonna, um, hey Narissa, how you doing? Good, good. Mm. Yeah, so we're just gonna wait a couple more minutes and then we're just gonna pray today um, based off of what we were talking about. Oh, this is loud. Um, based off of what we were talking about on Sunday. So we're just going to kind of, um, well, welcome from Turkey. Amen. Amen. So did you guys get to go back and watch Sunday's um, broadcast? If not, go back and watch it, please. Okay, good. Good. Hey, sister, how are you doing? I pray all is well. I don't know how the is working. It's raining here. Okay, good. Good. So tonight is going to be the same. It's going to be um, the same thing. Hey, DJ, how are you doing? Hey, Chastity, how are you doing today? Good. Good. No complaints. I have a little bit of a headache, but it's all good. It's all good. Today is the last day of July. The Lord has been really speaking some stuff about August. Um, hey, so while we're waiting, I'm going to wait like a minute more while we're waiting like a minute more I want you to type in some things that the Lord has been speaking to you about the month of August yeah 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 it's kind of dreary right right so hey Derek how are you doing I just want everybody to type in the Lord has been speaking to everybody so what has the Lord been saying to you about the month of August I want everybody to type it in. You know, there's some people who are going to come on and they're going to watch it later and they're going to be so encouraged by what you say the Lord has been showing you about the month of August. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, South is the... Uh, yeah. Yeah. But it's all good. We need the rain. We're praying for rain. Um, good, good, Eliza, how are you, um, for California, yeah, yeah, doors opening, thank you, woman of God, keep typing it in, nothing will stop you, come on, keep going, new beginnings, yep, it is the eighth month, right, it is the eighth month, new beginnings, mm -hmm. explore, that's good, we're in, I'm in Atlanta, mm-hmm, New, mm -hmm. good, come on guys, that's good. What else has the Lord been really pressing upon you? Amen, amen, Eliza from Turkey, if I'm saying that right. Victory, prosperity, peace, eights. Yes, the birthing of twins. There was a lot of babies that were born in the month of August in the natural Lots of babies were born. Marriage anointing. Mm -hmm. I never asked if you were married. I don't think. Have we ever talked about your relationship status? I don't think we have. Just stay. Sips her water that looks like tea, but it's really water. <laughs> How long have you been single? That was all like no swag. How long have you been single? And then we're just going to get started. We're going to be in Genesis um, chapter 9. She said forever. Okay, so that means you've never been married. Have you been close? Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. So we just pray into that for you. We just pray that into that. Hey, sister. You proposed to one time or married one time? Hey, Rosie Posey. 
Nope, haven't been to Turkey yet. Almost engaged. Okay. 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 I just bless God for what he kept you from. I just bless God for his infinite wisdom. Amen. So we just decree upon you just because we can that, um, yeah, I'm putting on, um, Vaseline. <laughs> um, because we can, we just decree upon you that this time is going to be easy. Um, it's going to be fun. It's going to be good. It's going to, um, you're going to, you're going to get to be yourself. You're not going to have any pretenses. They're just going to receive you from the very beginning as you are. They're just going to receive you from the very beginning as you are and like everything about you. You know, amen, amen. Well, we're praying that door opens. Amen. Amen. What did he speak, uh, DJ, about your husband? Yeah. So we, I just agree with you, sister. You've been faithful, says God. You've been faithful. Not in just like, you know, I'm faithful in my prayers. I'm faithful. No, I'm talking <laughs> just in keeping what the Lord said before you, right? You've been really faithful. Pharaoh's army drowned in the Red Sea. Faith, new territory, new heights. You better come on. New heights, new territory. That's kind of what we're going to be talking about today. Okay. Yeah, so we're going to be in Genesis chapter 9. Um, if you got some more stuff to type in, type it in. Type it in. July has tried to go out with a bang. Oh, I love that. Did you pray? Are you praying what he showed you? God showed me yesterday a vision of going from bridesmaid to bride. I love that. I love that on multiple levels. Multiple levels, right? My relationship with the Lord. Yeah. Yes, prayer of Jabez. Yes, come on through, Jesus. I love that. I love that. I prayed that actually for you guys this morning. Hey, it's been a long time, sister. Where have you been? We love you. Yeah, missed you, missed you, missed you, missed you. I'm so glad I get to see your thumbnail today. <laughs> amen, amen. Um, yeah, so this morning, um, I really prayed for you guys. Um, you know, I know on here we were always like, I'm praying for you and we're praying for you and all that kind of stuff. I really do. You know, I call out names and if I go back and look at the um, the replays, like call out names and pray. Yes, I agree with that, sister. The Lord has said that. Yes, there are some big things that are going to be. Um, amen. Amen. Well, that's what we're getting ready to do, Rose. We're going to um, be praying. Genesis chapter 9. So if you guys want to go ahead and turn there, Genesis 9. And this is for the month of August. July has been kind of, for, for, for a lot of people, um, amen, amen. We received that compliment. Thank you so much. Um, July has been kind of going out with a bang. Sister in the building, love you. How are you doing? Um, yeah. And it's, it's really just to kind of deter you. It's really just kind of like little pricking, like little shenanigans, little pop-offs. Um, because uh, this is a, we're going into August. And I don't know if you're taking notes. Let's go ahead and start taking notes. And of course, you take all of this to the Lord. Submit all of this to the Lord. And um, let him breathe on it more for you. Bring more context to it. Um, but this is, we're, we're going into a time where um, we... We really have to keep our, our focus on the Father. We really have to keep our focus on the Father. And so this is the season, thank you, Holy Spirit. This is the season, says the Lord, where it is the walking on the water. This is the season where you're going to walk on the water to Christ. This is the season where you're going to move and get out of the boat. Um, this is the season. I need y'all to hear this. This is the season where the Lord is calling you um, out into deeper to do great exploits for him. Um, this is the season. This is the season for those things. And so you have to keep your eyes on the Lord because just because he's calling you out and just because there's great adventure and, and, and you're getting to see, hey, Britt, Britt, you're getting to see the Lord 
and his magnificence, even at a greater propensity, that the, the, the swelling of the water, the things that are going on around you, voices of other people who should be, could be, would be out on the water, but because fear or because, you know, they think you're crazy or whatever, you're, you're, the people that you were rolling with for a long time who have the same ability and the same capability. And honestly, sometimes in our heart, we think that they should go before us, but they're still sitting out on the boat and you're making the decision to get out of the boat, Jesus, if it is you being bid me come. So I want you to write that down, Jesus, if it's you, bid me come. I want that to be um, in your prayer language, in your prayer. Every time the Lord puts something before you, every time Holy Spirit submits a proclamation of glory, write that down, a proclamation of glory, I want you to say, Jesus, if it is you, bid me come. Jesus, if it's you, bid me come. Jesus, if it's you, bid me come. And as you transition out of, I believe that we're getting out of mini boats, out of many boxes. Um, I believe that the Lord is, 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 is breaking, you know, the box of religion. He's breaking the box of things that we've done by habit and things, all that kind of stuff. And he's calling us into a place where we're really going to get to engage him, um, at a whole nother level. You're going to really do great exploits and it's not for you to pop your collar. It's not for you to, you know, I'm big man. I'm big woman. I do this. No, 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 no. It is the deeper we go with Jesus, the more humility, the more fear of God. God, write this down if you're in this the, the the rest of this year in your prayer language I want you to say God teach me to fear you teach me to fear you teach me the fear of the Lord teach me the fear of the Lord teach me the fear of the Lord the more that I know about him the more that I hey sister the more that I understand I don't know right the more that I get to see him the more an awe and trembling and that I am not fear that he's going to strike me dead because he's, you know what I'm saying? A crazy God with a lightning bolt in his hand waiting to strike me dead in a moment. No, no. Right. Right. And so, uh, as you're getting out of the boat and you're getting ready to do some great things and, you know, people are going to be, you know, looking and it's all God. It's all God. If you're writing this down, the Lord said to me, never say you were self-made. Always say you were God made. Never said I, I have gotten that um, that warning over and over and over, especially as we're walking into this time of the year. Usually I feel the, the uh, really heavy anointing in the year. Y'all probably feel it too. Okay, no, we ain't deep. Um, around September, October, you can feel the anointing. I mean, the anointing in the atmosphere is just bubbling. You can feel the anointing, but the anointing, I started feeling it in the middle of July. Come on, sister. Yeah, I started feeling it in the middle of July. And, and it was almost as if the Lord was saying, the season has changed. The season has changed. The season has already changed. And we've gone into days of glory. We're gone. We've gone into days of glory. And as we're walking into this thing and God is, he's positioning us and he's repositioning us. You never say, never say. I am self-made. Never get anywhere. And people ask how you do it. And when people say, you know, you were self-made, you 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 came up by the you, the strength of your own bootstraps. You always correct them, and you say, "I am God-made, for it is He who has given you the power to get wealth." And you will remember the Lord your God, and He will remember you. You were God made. You were God led. Never, 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 never say you were self-made. Never be lured. Never be seduced into that place of pride. If it is you, God, bid me come. Hallelujah. And so there is such an anointing, um, you know, really Sunday. Um, I, I'm still just that whole, when the Lord was speaking about one man, one altar, one prayer, one man, one altar, one prayer, one man, one altar, one prayer, and it altered heaven. And in, in Genesis chapter eight, the Bible says, and God said within himself, he didn't, he didn't talk to anybody. He said within himself, this is what I'm going to do. His prayers have come before, not his prayers, but his sacrifice, which symbolizes prayer and worship. The whole burnt offering came before God and it was a sweet smelling savor in the nostril of God. And God said within himself, one man, one altar. One man, one altar. And so that, you know, that's really just, uh, you know what I mean? And so we, we didn't realize. And so when we transitioned to Genesis chapter nine, remember, replace your name with Noah, replace Noah's name with your name. Noah had no idea. Noah had no idea when he built an altar. 
that Genesis, in Genesis chapter 9, that he was going to get a mighty visitation from God and God was going to cut covenant with him. And God was going to cut covenant with him. He had no idea. And so this is, I really believe this is where we are. We talked about this earlier in the year. I feel like God was priming us. God is getting ready to visit you. If you're taking notes, God is getting ready to visit you and you're getting ready. He's getting ready to cut covenant with you and your family. Amen. Remember, God, if it's you, bid me come. God, if it's you, bid me come. God, if it's you, bid me come. Come, God, if it's you, bid me come. And so just, um, we're in Genesis chapter nine. And I just want to pray this over you because we have to understand that when God visits us, he visits the whole assignment. When God visits us, when God cuts a covenant with us, we're getting ready to see this. He does it with everything that you come in contact and everything that you touch. We're really, you know, on this scope, we really, you know, we really not, get, we really don't, I feel like the Holy Spirit, maybe we do, I could be off, but I really feel like the Holy Spirit just really taught, he really talks a lot about assignment and anointing, kingdom come, kingdom done kind of thing, right? Living up to the God, the God decree and doing things for the kingdom and setting up the shop, hallelujah, uh, until the day of Jesus Christ being sealed in the Holy Spirit, taking culture and taking and shifting generations. And I believe that that's what the Father has called you to in this time and that's why he set you here that in the where you are that he's calling you to reset generation to reset culture to order and ordain holiness to order and ordain right hey sister and so you know we always talk about the providential will of god right the providential will of god and and that supersedes us and that goes past our um intellect right and so even the blessing of the lord if you're taking notes even the blessing of the lord um which is really the assignment of the lord i need you to take that note down because people will say that that is a blessing and you have to you have to correct them and say no baby this is an assignment i need you to catch that people be like oh you're so blessed no baby this is an assignment this is resource to do the assignment. In order for my car, right? In order for my car to, to do its assignment, and the assignment of my vehicle is to get me from point A to point B, I have to supply it with gas. If I don't put gas in the vehicle that's supposed to take me from point A to point B, then it's not going to be able to do what it was designed to do. And so a lot of times people will look at God putting gas in you. They'll look at God putting resources in you. They will look at God planting you, but they don't understand that, baby, I'm just a vehicle and I've got to get from point A to point B for the king. And so people will say, well, what's the formula for you being so blessed? What's the formula? Oh, God did this and you're so blessed and all of this. Thing. No, 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 baby. You don't understand. It's the assignment. And so the assignment is giving. It's, I'm getting the Jesus juice because of the assignment. I'm getting, this is an assignment. I, my, the assignment of my life is to serve the Lord, to serve God. Come on, guys, to wait on God. The, my assignment is to is to get his voice from point A to point B. My assignment is to get his hands from point A to point B. My assignment, yes, yes, your job is an assignment. My uh, that's my assignment. So he's got to give me fuel. He's got to he's got to make sure that the tires are good. He's got to make sure that the tune up is in place, that the engine is good. He's got to make sure that the tags are proper, that the emissions are. Come on, the, all of the maintenance that you do to your car. You're not blessing your car when you go get an oil change. You're not blessing your car when you go get tires. No, you're keeping it safe so that you will be safe as your vehicle takes you from point A to point B as it is doing what it was designed to do. Uh, 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 its design is to get you where it's a vehicle. And that's exactly what you are. And so there's some maintenance that's getting ready to hit your life. I need you to take notes. It's maintenance. And a lot of times we'll say it's a blessing. The blessing of the Lord, the blessing of the Lord is the Lord himself. The blessing of the Lord is, is the presence of God himself. The blessing of the Lord, come on guys, is the name of God himself. The blessing of the Lord, come on guys, is the word of the Lord. The blessing of the Lord, the approval of God, right? I want God over stuff. I want the presence of God over stuff. And so the, the stuff is really just maintenance so that I could be the vehicle for God that I was designed to be. Right? And so a, a, a lot of these things that God is telling you that you've been praying for, it's kind of like your oil light went on. 
Come on, guys. When you're driving in your car and the oil light comes on, the car is not saying, bless me, bless me, bless me. The car is saying, maintenance, ding, 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 maintenance, ding, 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 maintenance. Because if you're the owner and you do not maintain, come on, the vehicle that is designed to get you from point A to point B, it'll blow up on you, blow an oil gasket, it'll run out of oil and blow up the engine, right? And so God being the perfect owner, God being the perfect daddy, God understanding uh, the, the nature. We have a high priest who is well acquainted. Come on, guys. Hebrews with who we are and our needs and how we work and what's going on. It's maintenance. Maintenance. I thank you, Holy Spirit. Maintenance is coming to hit your life. Maintenance is here. And so these things that the Father is showing you and saying, let be like, thank you for the blessing. Thank you for the blessing. Thank you for the blessing. But I submit to you that really you are in a season of maintenance. You are in a season of upgrade. You are in a season of overhaul so that you, the vehicle, can get the Father. Thy kingdom come. Come in this vehicle. Will be done of the kingdom in this vehicle. May this vehicle always run well. May this vehicle always, come on guys do what it was designed to do. And so every place that is at a deficit, Father, thank you that this is a season where your people are in the shop of heaven and the maintenance, the maintenance, the maintenance is happening. Hallelujah. And so for a lot of us, um, you know, when we talk about, you know, we've had scratches and dings. I don't know why we're going with this car analogy, but we're just going to keep going with the car analogy. Hey, Tamisha. Um, the, 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 a lot of us, you know, when you, when you was like, driving and you was going out to a garage and there was a bush right there and you backed up and then you felt the bush or you heard the bush kind of going with your car as you back up the bush is like scraping against your car or when you was at the grocery store and you have put your cart too close to the door and then you open the door and it hit the grocery cart and it got a ding and it has a scratch you know, or somebody hit you in the back and you was like, oh, you know what? It's all good. But then you really didn't kind of, you know what I'm saying? Get it fixed. And so for a lot of people, hey, Tamar, a lot of us, we're getting ready to, we're getting, we're going to the shop and the body is getting painted. The body of the car is getting maintenance. The windows are getting some, the wheels are getting some things. The body is, and there's some dents and some dings and some scratches that are getting ready to not just be buffed out, but God is going to get to put some new paint on it, make it all shiny and brand new. There's some things that are getting ready to happen under the hood. Come on, guys. There's some Freon that's getting ready to be put in the air condition so that you don't run hot and some coolant that's getting ready to come on, guys. Some maintenance is getting ready to happen because you've been rolling like this for too long. And a lot of times we're like the blessing, the blessing, the blessing. And God is saying, no, baby, it's just maintenance. It's maintenance. When you said, when you said, when you said God providential will. When you said, God, your providential will pass my intellect. I'll go for real. I'm a vehicle. I'm a vehicle. I'm a vehicle. And so when you, when you say, come on, I'm like, okay, if it's you, God, bid me come. Let's do this. Put your key in the ignition. God, you are not the co-pilot. You are the pilot. I hate that saying, God is my co-pilot. Is he? Co? 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 To me, co-pilots, it means the two pilots are on par with each other. We both have the same intellect. We both have the same understanding. We both have the same training. We both graduated from the same school. God ain't my co-pilot. I am probably not even a passenger. I'm just a plane. <laughs> I'm just a plane, right? Come on. Come on. We, we, that's, I hate that when people, I hate that bumper sticker. I be want to like rip it off people's cars and stuff. Anyway. So I just kind of wanted to submit that to you. We, we really got to rev up God. This is a season where when God has spoken to you, he is bringing it to pass and you're getting ready to see it, but you got to keep your eyes focused on God. You're going to have to clean out your thoughts. You got to clean out your thoughts. You got to close doors to conversations that are contrary to the will of God, the work of God, and the word of God. The will of God and the work of God and the word of God cannot be under attack by voices that you let in the door. 
the will of God, the work of God, and the word of God cannot be under attack. It cannot be under constant attack. It is this is the season where you've got to close the door. You are getting ready to see the grand arm of God. You're getting ready to see the glorious arm of God. You're getting ready to see the grandiose works of God from August all the way until December. You're getting ready to, to be introduced to who you are because your purpose is getting ready to flourish. You're getting ready to bloom in the courts of heaven. You're getting ready to bloom in the courtyard of, of God. You're getting ready to bloom in the garden of God. You're getting ready to bloom. You're getting ready to see the Lord stand up. You're getting ready to experience God. God, if it's you, bid me come. Gosh. And here's the thing. This is what we're getting ready to see in Genesis chapter 9 because I just want to pray this over you. If you didn't watch Sundays, you know, go back and watch it, you know, please. Um, if you need to watch it again, like go watch it. You know what I'm saying? I never, you know, I've really never heard that preached anywhere. The Holy Spirit was just talking to me about it. You know, Noah, one man, one altar, altered history. One man, one altar, altered history in heaven and then in the earth. When he, when he sacrificed, it was a game changer to God. And that's the kind of way, and that's the kind of glory that God has positioned in you. And he's drawing it out. He's drawing, he knew that he had deposited that in Noah. And he knew what Noah was going to do. He knew, God knew. And that's what's on the inside of you. Amen. So let's run to Genesis chapter 9. I know you guys are already there. Let me get there. All right, so are we in Genesis chapter 9? All right, verse 1. And God blessed, remember, you got to take the word Noah out, and God blessed Rosette, and God blessed Natalie, and God blessed Chastity, and God blessed Tamar, and put your name in, and God blessed, put your name there, and his sons, and, his, and your lineage, and said unto them, come on, Sabria, and said unto them, be fruitful, DJ, multiply and replenish the earth, Shannon. And this is what God is saying to you right now. This is what God is saying to you right now, brother. And God blessed Paula and God blessed Diana and your lineage. Yes. And he said uh, unto them, be fruitful, multiply and replenish and replenish the earth, right? Noah, um, yeah, uh, Adam, Adam was supposed to, you know, be fruitful, multiply, <laughs> not replenish. This word replenish is for Noah. Because Noah was a type of a remnant. So he had to replenish. Right? I'm going to replenish you. Verse 2. This is... Uh, this is the Lord speaking to you. This is, this is God cutting covenant. This is the sound of covenant. When we were like, what is covenant? What does it sound like? I need you to get the rhythm. This is the rhythm. And now you, this is a type and a shadow because God's going to put more detail to it for you. But this is the first, this is the framework, right? This is God speaking to you. And the fear of you, Natalie, and the dread of you, Denise, shall be upon every beast of the earth every fowl of the air, upon all that moveth upon the earth, upon all the fishes of the sea, and into your hand they are delivered. Read that again. And the fear of you, and the dread of you, and the fear of you, and the dread of you. Guys, all of this is happening because of the altar. All of this is happening because of the communion. All of this is happening because of the prayer and the worship. And so God made, he said, hmm. Now he's talking to Noah about what his decision was in Genesis chapter 8. So now he's coming to Noah and he's like, the fear of you and the dread of you shall be upon every beast of the earth, every fowl of the air, and everything that moveth in the earth. The fear of you and the dread of you. 
So something happens when, when, when the father puts the, his kavad on you. We talked about this like two weeks ago. He was setting you up. When the king of glory, be ye lifted up, ye ancient doors, and the king of glory. When the king of glory takes the weight, some weight off of him, and he puts it on you, it causes the fear and the dread that comes from um, in the, th in the third heaven, the second heaven, and in this and in, in this first heaven, the fear and the dread, the, the sound, the smell of God, the name of God, the dabar of God. He takes what's off of him and he puts it on you. The fear of you and the dread of you. Oh, the dread tomorrow when your feet hit the floor. Oh, the sound. Remember we talked about the, the four lepers, right? You, you, when your feet hit the floor, you hear a, a tiny tap because you, you may have carpet. You don't even hear nothing. You dragging your feet. Um, that's all, you know what I mean? But you don't understand that when your feet hit the floor, this begins to happen. And a reverberation begins to happen. A, 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 a shaking begins to happen. And the fear and the dread that you're going to get up and you're going to speak. The fear and the dread that you're going to get up and you're going to pray. The fear and the dread that you're going to get up and you're going to do. The fear and the dread that you're going to get up and move in your identity. The fear and the dread that you're getting ready to move. Come on, in the visitation and the covenant promise that God has placed upon your head this is good this is good the sound of covenant is hitting your house every beast of the earth every fowl of the air and everything that moveth upon the earth the fishes in the sea into your hand deliverance I need you to write that down if you're taking notes from now and to the end of 2018, anything that you put in your hand, deliverance. Every prayer that you put in your hand and you lift it to God in worship at that altar, deliverance. Every system that you put in your mouth and you put in your hand and you lift to, to the Father, deliverance. I have into your hand are they delivered into your hand they are delivered into your hand they are delivered into your this is part of the blessing this is part of the blessing in verse one he said and god blessed noah and verse two he's still blessing noah this is part of the blessing do you see how the blessing has a different sound than maintenance do y'all see this a different sound do y'all you, do you, see when we when we think about like blessing we're like oh oh my gosh god blessed you oh that's so pretty that's so awesome and do y'all see that the blessing when we really look at it, it has, it's a charge. Do you see the blessing is a command? Do you see the blessing is maintenance? The blessing is power to do God. And so, you know, we got to kind of see that. We got to kind of see blessing a little different. Blessing ain't, you know, it ain't a big house. It ain't a fine car. It, it's, it, no, no. Blessing is the charge to be in health. Even as your soul prospers. So that you could go to the harvest. And that you could, you could harvest the harvest for the king. Kingdom come and kingdom done. Nothing missing and nothing broken. That's prosperity. Nothing missing and nothing broken. So that you can keep showing up and you can keep showing up and you can keep showing up in the strong name of God. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, I, I, so I, I, if you did not write that down or you did not circle that. You've been charged with the charge that if it comes to flex against you, if it comes to rear up against you, that you go back to Genesis chapter 9 and to verse 2 and into my hand, into my hand, it's already been delivered. Into my hand, let me give you this word. Let me give you this word delivered in Hebrew. Is that okay? Into my hand, the, the word, I didn't know this. I didn't know this. Um, delivered in Hebrew is Nathan, Nathan, Nathan. It means to give 
used with great latitude to put, make, add, appoint, bestow, charge, come, doubtless without fail, into your hand without fail, into your hand doubtless, into your hand charged, into your hand ordained. One of the definitions is ordained. Into your hand it has been ordained. Jesus. Into your hand victory has been ordained. Into your hand, sub submission and subduing. Your hand has been ordained to subdue. Your hand has been ordained to triumph. Ordained, 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 ordained. Jesus. Jesus. Bestow, set, and ascribe. All right, verse 3. Every still blessing him, every moving thing that liveth shall be meat for you, even as the green herb have I given you all things. But flesh with the life thereof, which is blood thereof, you shall not eat. All right, so we'll just stop right, we'll, we'll stop there. So and we'll talk about the rest of it another day. But I so I just wanted to pray this um and, and give you the verbiage. Give you the verbiage, right? of the, the blessing, the charge, the maintenance that has come to hit your life. And right now on this scope, we've got to say to the Lord as a group, as a community, as a people, as the bride, come on guys, as the bride, that we're closing the door to everything that would challenge, come on, that would challenge the covenant of God, if you're taking notes. Everything that comes to challenge Genesis chapter 8 and Genesis chapter 9. Everything that comes to speak contrary to what God has spoken in the scripture and he's going to give you more context by way of revelation. God, if this is you, bid me come. God, if you have ordained my hand to have utter deliverance, if you have utterly ordained my hand, come on, to, to know victory, know victory. You have utterly ordained my hand to know, to be well acquainted, to be intimately acquainted with triumph. Did y'all catch that? God has ordained your hand to be intimate with victory. Intimate. Intimate with victory. Intimate triumphant, intimate with apostolic signs and wonders, intimate with the glory. He's ordained your hands to be intimate. He's ordained your life. He's, or, he's ordained your space. He's ordained your name and victory to be intimate, to meet together, to know each other, to be well acquainted, to be to be able to, to finish each other's sentences, to hold each other's hand, to skip and frolic through the battlefields of life. Victory, oh victory, utterly ordained. Hallelujah. And so Father, in the name of Jesus, we just bless you for these 24 people and the people who will watch the scope later for the end of July, the end of the seventh month in our calendar. But we understand the seasons, the seasons. And so we don't look at the seven and we don't say, oh, the seven means this and eight means that because a day to the Lord can be as a thousand years and a thousand years is of a day. Come on, right? And so really we are forecasting. We are seeing the rain fall from heaven. We're seeing the glory cloud in heaven. We understand that the seasons have changed. The season is changing according to the debar of God. According to the books of heaven. Hallelujah. And so we understand that this is going to be, and this is what I'm hearing so strongly, this is going to be such a, you know, acceleration, that's my word. This is going to be such an accelerated month. An accelerated day. I don't even want to use our time. Because we got to speak God's language. Right? And let's not speak man's language. Right? August. August that's, that's man's language. The language of God. This is an accelerated day. This is an accelerated hour. The hour is at hand. The day of the Lord is prepared. 
for a celebration. The day of the Lord is prepared for a celebration. The day of the Lord is prepared for a celebration. This is things heavy. The day of the Lord, the day of the one day, one day in God vernacular could be the rest of your life. One day in God vernacular could be the rest of your life and your kids' lives. One day. When a day is as a thousand years and a thousand years is as a day. Hey, man of God, right? Let's speak the language of God. Let's not speak the language of man. Because here's the thing. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Ugh, Jesus. Ugh. Okay, Holy Spirit. When we talk about these 30 days and, you know, the month of August, nothing wrong with absolutely nothing wrong with that. But a lot of times people will stop short and say that 30 days is over. And God is like, well, I'm, I'm still, you're still in this river. You're still in this river of blessing. Why do you not, why are you getting out? Naaman, if Naaman had to stop dipping at number five, right? Let's speak the vernacular of God. Uh, this is the day that the Lord has prepared. This is the day. This is the hour. Come on, the day. And so we, we let's not let's not put uh, God on a timetable. Come on. Yep. Let's not put God on a 30 day calendar. Let's not put God in an hour. Let's bring our hours and our days and our moments and let's fling them into glory. The day. Come here, Psalm chapter one, verse three, and you shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water and you, you shall give forth fruit in your season and your leaf shall not wither. Why? Because you are in a perpetual season of fruitful, being fruitful. In our regular seasons, right? In order for a plant to keep blooming, it must have a season of rest. Leaves fall off. Blooms fall off, fruit falls off, but then it's very peculiar, right? He says, in it, you shall give forth fruit in your season and your leaf shall not wither. This is the day of blooming before the Lord and your leaf shall not wither and you shall give forth fruit in your season. When Jesus comes to pluck of your tree, there will be figs. When Jesus comes to examine the assignment that is on your life, you shall be blooming. You shall be working. You shall be found being faithful over whatever he has given you to do. I was praying this, and I'm just going to pray it over you in terms of what we're talking about. The father was talking about um, barrenness in terms of uh, birthing an assignment, barrenness in terms of, of, of not carrying to term, not being able to carry, not talking about natural babies, but in terms of your assignment, in terms of your life. If you like that fig tree, you're planted, the leaves are there, but there isn't any fruit and so I believe that in this month, in this day of the Lord, as we're crossing over into a day of the Lord, are y'all hearing this? As we're crossing over into this day of the Lord that the hand of God has prepared, that the blessing of Psalms chapter one, verse three, and your leaf shall not wither and you shall give forth fruit in your season. And so we prophesy to the limbs of your assignment, we prophesy. To the leaves of your assignment, we prophesy. To your roots, according to your assignment, that you are a tree planted by the rivers of Holy Spirit, rivers of water, <laughs> rivers of water. As you begin to bloom, you will not stop blooming. As you begin to run, you will not stop running. As you begin to produce, you will not stop producing because you are planted in Holy Spirit. You are planted not in the planting of man. You are not planted in the gifts of man. You are not planted in the ways of man. You are planted by the rivers of water. 
Jesus. And your leaf shall not wither. You are getting ready to come out of yourself as you know it. You're getting ready to meet your end and your beginning. You're getting ready to meet your end and your beginning at the same time. There are some books that have been bubbling. There are some things that have just been kind of there. And the father is saying, I was waiting for your yes. I was waiting for, your, for you to get down with a providential will. I was waiting for you to say, Jesus, if this is you, bid me come. And so now I'm about to blow on the, on the, the winds of courage upon your courage. I'm getting ready to favor you, the favor that is upon your life. And you're getting ready to come to your end as you meet your beginning. You're coming to your end as you meet your beginning. Jesus. And the Father is just saying, hallelujah. There's some people in some places that are just not going to like it because this is beyond you. I need y'all to see this. I, need I just need you just to sit in this. I am here the Lord. When we say yes to the providential will of God, when we when we are saying yes to the providential will of God, it's when we fling off constraint. We fling off constraint, and it is a resounding God, yes, like God, I trust you, like God, I'm in, for real. I get it. We've got to do this, like I'm in. That what you begin to see is such a grace and a weight and a presence of God upon your life. So it's past your intellect and it's even past you being able to actually explain what's going on because you're just being driven. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You're just being driven. Go back to that car analogy. You're just being driven. You're being driven by the Holy Spirit. You're just being driven by the wind of the Holy Spirit. You're just being driven by the hand of God. You're just being driven. And he says this biblical. And the hand of the Lord, presence of God came upon me. And he took me in the spirit. Right? You can't stop it. You, you can't even say what it is. I don't know if I was, I don't know. I, I, what's going on? God. And so, you know, people, um, you know, may have things to say, want to sit down with you and kind of make sense of it. St stay away from that. This is a season where you've got to keep your eyes on the Father. This is a season, I'm hearing the Lord say, just miraculous. It, it, it's going to look like it's, you know, miraculous. You know what I'm saying? And, and it is because it's, it's inexplainable, right? But at the same time, it's just you moving with God. It's just you moving with God. Kingdom come and kingdom done. 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 Come on. Hallelujah. See? Hallelujah. So this is, this is, you know, a lot of times we're just like, you know, when we hear words like this, we're just like, oh God, I really, really want this. Like, I really, really want to move like this. I really, really want this courage. And the Father is saying, all you have to do is say yes and I will do the rest. If, if you say yes, I will, I will be that courage. If, if you say yes, if you say yes, I will be your courage. If you say yes, I will, I will blow upon that courage. If you say yes, I will plant you. If you say yes, I will prune you. If you say yes, I will bloom you. If you say yes, I will send you. If you say yes, I will prepare the way. If you say yes, I will go and I will be in you and you will go because you're in me. If you say yes. Hallelujah. If you say yes. This is the day of the Lord, right? Right, this is the day of the Lord. This is the day of the Lord in your life. And so there's some, we talked about this before, um, maybe, um, I don't know, last week, I think, that the Lord, Sunday, I don't know. The Lord said, you know, he's gonna put some really big things in front of you, it's gonna look like he's gonna, there's some big walls of Jericho, You take the yes of the Lord and you show up. You take the power of God and you show up. You take the word of the Lord and you show up. And he'll bring the wall down. 
He'll bring the wall down. He will cause the fear and the dread to come upon the inhabitants of the land. Come here, Joshua. Upon the inhabitants of, he will cause the fear and the dread. All you got to do is just show up. All you got to do is show up with the yes of the Lord. Show up with the debar. Show up. That's it. And so, Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for this moment of transition. Thank you for the, the season of transition. Thank you for these hallways of transition. We say yes as a people. We say yes for the people. Come on, guys, intercessors. We say yes for the people. We say yes for the body. We say yes for the church. We say yes for. We say yes for, we stand in proxy for, and we say yes, that we're going to see a shifting, a transition. We say yes. If it's you, bid us come in the nations. If it's you, bid us come in the nations. If it's you, bid us come in the nations, in every nation. May we hear the bidding of Christ. If, may we hear the, the calling of God. May we hear the wooing of the Holy Spirit. If it's you, bid us come for the nations. Hallelujah. 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 Like Samuel, we say, yes, Lord. Come on, guys. And so, Father, thank you that in the Gregorian calendar, as tomorrow is a new month, and there's, you know, it's the number eight, and we understand that that's prophetic, but still, God, we move out of, out of what man can piece together. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. But I'm saying, God, we want to move into the the scrolls of God. We want to move into the scrolls of your heart, God. We want to move. We want to move into the deeper things of God. We want to move into the, the deeper intellect and intel of the Father, into the deeper intel of, of glory. The day of the Lord. The season of perpetual planting. Perpetual purpose. Perpetual. Hallelujah. And so, Father, I thank you that encouragement, 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 that the yes that your people have said to you has brought such an encouragement, such an encouragement. Thank you, God, that it is impossible to be discouraged in your presence. This is the sound of warfare that we put on. It is impossible to be in the presence of God and be discouraged. There is no discouragement in God. And we are in the presence of the Lord. You are perpetually in Psalms 91. You are in the secret place. You are under the shadow of the Almighty. You are in the presence of the Lord. And so if you are in the presence of the Lord, if you are in the presence of encouragement, if you are in the presence, God, of peace, of shalom. If you are in the presence, how could we then be discouraged? Hallelujah. And so we empty our pockets. We empty, we empty our pockets in your presence. And so where we've been hiding pieces of lint and when we pull out the lint, it says discouragement. We've had pieces of paper and written it or words and curses and things that other people gave us. We empty our all of our pockets. You know, before you put clothes in the washer, Machine, come on, guys, with kids, with little boys. You got to go through the pockets because they'd be hiding things. And if you don't, what will happen is it will contaminate the whole wash. It'll, it'll mess up the whole washing machine. It'll mess up the whole dryer. Like one crayon. Let a crayon make it into the dryer. It'll, your, your whole dryer will be different colors. I mean, you get a, get a paper towel, get some paper and put it in the washing machine. All the clothes will have bits of paper all interwoven. All, and so we empty our pockets before we go into the wash. We empty our pockets as before we go into the wash and to the transition. We empty our pockets. Hallelujah. That there will be nothing forgotten. That there will be nothing hidden. And so in the courts of heaven, we empty our pockets. We empty our coat pockets. We empty the secret pockets. We empty the pockets that are hidden. The extra pockets. We empty all of the pockets. You know, some of us women, I'm supposed to say, we put stuff in our bras. We empty out every everywhere we can put some stuff in our shoes and our socks. We empty every place that we could carry or hold something. We empty it before you now, God, in the name of Jesus. Because we say in this season, nothing. 
nothing will be allowed to come and fight against the word of God, the will of God, and the work of God. Not in this season, not this time, not we empty our pockets. And so God, every place in the pockets, thank you Holy Spirit, the pockets of our personality. Come on guys. And then it says our personality is given to worry. We empty that pocket. Our personality is, is given over to discouragement or being melancholy. We empty that pocket. How can we be melancholy when the spirit, the Holy Spirit is joy? And when we said yes to you, Christ, we got the Holy Spirit. And the fruit of the spirit, the fruit that he is with us is joy. And so we empty out the pocket that would fight against Holy Spirit. And we put in our personality the fruit of joy. We put it in there. Hallelujah. That we are a people of joy and that people will understand that their character of God is, he is a God of joy. He is a God who supplies joy. He is a God that desires joy. Do he desires to come into his presence with singing? Hallelujah. Joy. And so we empty out the, the pockets of our personality. We empty out the pockets of our soul and the seats of our soul. Every place that could be a container of a contaminant. We empty it at the altar. We believe this is you. And you bid us come. Hey, Pastor. You guys are moving into assignment. This isn't, uh, this isn't, you no, know, get on here. So you can be joy and you can run around and you can roll and frolic and smell the roses and just be happy. No, 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 no. You will be a minister of joy. You will break depression off of people. You will break depression off of atmospheres. You will break suicide off of atmospheres. You will be a minister of joy. You will have a breaker anointing against discouragement. You will see that God will bring you people over and over and over that are discouraged and you will minister to them. Come on. The gospel of Christ. You will prophesy, edify, and encourage, and comfort. God is going to use you. Everything about you, God is going to use. You are a weapon. Everything about you is a weapon of his warfare. A weapon, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so, Father, thank you for the grace and the glory to move in this day of the Lord, in this hour of acceleration, in this place of being fruitful and replenishing. Thank you, God, for the big assignment. Come on, Dread Warrior. Thank you for the big assignments that you're placing upon people. Thank you for the big instruction. Thank you for the big God vision and the big God plan. And they, we will arise and say, hey, if it's you, bid me come. Bid me come. And you'll get out of the boat. And so I just decree that this is a season that for everybody who's watching, everybody who will watch later, you're out of the boat. You're out of the boat. One decision. One decision. One act. You're out of the boat. And so we decree even upon your households, out of the boat. Out of the boat. We decree upon your children that they will be courageous. We decree upon your children that they will be of the tribe of Joshua. They will be of the of the lineage of Joshua. That they will lead a people in. 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 In they will lead a people in your daughters will not be timid. Your daughters will not be soft spoken, but they will be women who stand for justice. 
They will not be manly, but they will be women who stand for justice. Your sons will be manly. Your sons will prophesy. Your sons will dream dreams. Your sons will arise and be uh, uh, enforcers of justice. At a young age, we will see boys and girls arise to eradicate bullying. But they will know the spirit by which it is masking itself under the guise of bullying. They will be able to call it out and say it is a murdering spirit that is trying to come upon my school. And I will not stand for it. I stand. Come on, guys. I stand in the courtroom of heaven. And I ask God as a 13 and 14 year old, God, visit my school. God, visit the hallways. God, visit the classrooms. God, visit the teachers that even teachers who would bully because there's they're being bullied and there's things that are going on even at home that your your children will arise come on guys come on you, your children will not be afraid to go to school your children will walk in the hallways and the spirits will flee before God in them seven ways your children will go and walk up to those who are being bullied and they will have such a sound of comfort. Breaker anointing upon your children. Breaker anointing upon your teenagers. Breaker anointing upon your young adults. Breaker anointing. God will use you and your whole household. And it's gonna go, it ain't going to be mama's the only one doing God in the household anymore. Daddy's the only one doing No, we all go as for me and my house. As for me and my house, we get out of the boat. As for me and my house, Jesus. And so we even cover this school year as the kids are getting ready to go back to school. Hallelujah. You, you will not be in fear of buses and bullies and, and, and craziness and shenanigans. Uh, your kids will not be, you know, uh, 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 their destinies will not be murdered. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Their destinies will not be murdered because of labeling. Their destinies will not, especially kindergarten, first, second, third graders, their destinies will not, the, the, the literally words will not reach them about their abilities or an inability. And we decree, declare only capability upon your children, only capability. They are more than well able. Your babies are more than well able. Your babies are more than well able. If your child comes home and they, it seems like they're reading at a slower rate or they just don't get the math, you lay hands on them and you tell them that they are more than well able. Because remember in verse 2, deliverance. Deliverance is also in their hands. Deliverance is also in their hands. For, for your children taking the SATs and the PSATs and the, the GMAT and all of those, deliverance is in their hands. Deliverance is in their hands. They are more than well able. Jesus. Hallelujah. Salt. Salt. Your children are salt. Your children are salty. Your children. Your children. Your children are, are instruments for the use of God. Hallelujah. For every teacher, we just pray for every teacher who is called by God to teach in the K through 12 education system. They are salt. They are weighty. They are influential in the name of Jesus. That every time they come together for staff meetings and... PD, that when they open their mouth, the room listens. When they make suggestions, the room listens. By praying tonight, the 25, 26 of us who are praying tonight earnestly, we are praying earnestly before the Lord that the teachers call by the name of God. They will turn their face to the wall and they will pray and we shall see a system changing. We shall see systems changing. We shall see resources come to states, uh, Oklahoma. We shall see resources come and rest. We shall see a changing, hallelujah, in the system in the name of Jesus. 
Because everybody's kid ain't going to get out. Everybody's not going to take their kid and do homeschooling. Everybody's not going to take their kid and go to private schools. And so we're not going to take our kids and run. No, we're going to take our kids and pray. That's what we're going to do for the system. Hallelujah. That this, it will be a system that belongs to the father. Hallelujah. And so we, we cut the red tape from around teachers and the voices of educators, from around principals, from around administrators who are called by God in this time, who are called by God in this season to go into a system and to rearrange it. We cut the red tape of, of politics. We cut it off of them and we decree and declare that they move with ease, that they move in freedom, that they move with government upon their shoulder in the name of Jesus. We decree that the key of David is upon their shoulder. Hallelujah. And that God, you will give them the words to say. You will give them the words to pray. That they will walk the grounds and they will decree a thing and it will be established. That we will see teachers gather together praying. That we will see parents gather together praying. That we will see te uh, children gather together praying in the name of Jesus. Praying in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And so we cover this new school year. We cover what shall happen, especially the United States of America. We cover it. Hallelujah. And we decree well springs of life shall spring up. Well springs of life over every elementary school, middle school, and high school. But oh, well springs of life in the name of Jesus. That our children will not die, but they shall live. They shall live and they shall declare. They shall live and they shall declare. And they shall so keep on declaring in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 And so, Father, thank you for intercessors arising. Thank you for salt being salty. Thank you for the declarations over this uh, school year, all the states and overseas. Hallelujah. But especially the United States of America, we're seeing something unprecedented. We're seeing the uh, one nation in the earth that has more out outrageous outbreaks. But, Father, we thank you that your power and your spirit comes and it subdues. Hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you that we shall see kids arise. We shall see the children arise. But they shall arise with the sound of God justice and righteousness. This is the generation that will seek you, that will seek you, that will seek your face, O Jacob. This is the generation. This is the generation. This is the generation. This is the generation. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We pray. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Woo. Amen. So I encourage you to pray Genesis 8 and Genesis 9 to take notes. Pray those notes. Keep record. Keep a journal. Keep record of answered prayer. Keep a record. Once a week, go through answer the answered prayer. Just pull them out and just begin to bless God for the prayers that he answered. Sometimes we just get so used to God answering prayer that we never go back and praise him. And just praise him for answering. Praise him for answering. Praise him for answering. Praise him for answering. Him for answering. Sheesh. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Um, Natalie, you said you wanted prayer. So we're just going to, you know, we're not going into a lot of deep prayer tonight because I believe this is weighty. And so we're going to put this on. We're putting this on. But this is for Natalie because she emailed me and for everybody who kind of, you know what I mean? Um, woman of God, what you desire, what you desire, what you put before God, you already have it. You already have it. You already have it. Holy Spirit is going to teach you how to. Holy Spirit is going to teach you your language and talk in, ter in terms of dream interpretation, guys. But really, this is for any of working in any of the gifts because they are Holy Spirit's gifts, right? Um, and dreams is a type of the prophetic. It is the foretelling. It could be a word of wisdom. It could be a word of knowledge. But it is God speaking, right? Or, you know, it's discerning of spirits or some other things that are going on that are trying to interrupt the speaking of the Lord. And so as you pray, right, as you pray and as you seek counsel and wisdom, jo Joseph said it best, you know, all interpretation comes from God. All interpretation comes from God. All interpretation comes from God because it's his word. And so if it's his word, if you know, like a painter, 
you know, they paint and so we all can say, well, I say that the painting means this and I say that the painting means this. Well, it doesn't matter what any of us say because we didn't paint it. And so at the end of the day, the, the one who did the painting, the one who created it, what they created and the definition of what they created stands. And so what God said and the interpretation of what God says, that's up to the father. And so sometimes we just got to kind of relax. And so even though, you know, um, you may look at people and they just seem to just boom, 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 boom. It's not necessarily that they're so gifted, right? It's not that we have the same measure. The gift is the gift, right? It's Holy Spirit. We all have the same measure of Holy Spirit, but really at what level and measure do we submit to Holy Spirit? And so really it's this wild class of submitting to the Holy Spirit. (laughs) That's really what we're learning. We're learning how to submit to the Holy Spirit so that we can hear, so that we can flow, so that we don't have the anxiety and the angst. Right? So when we talk about the school of the Holy Spirit, we're in the school of the Holy Spirit on how to submit to the Holy Spirit. <laughs> how to counsel with, how to be with, how to listen, how to flow with the Holy that's what That's what it is. Right? Teach me how to prophesy. Teach me how to prophesy. No. Teach me how to submit so that you can speak. Teach me how to decrease so that you can increase. Teach me how to ebb and flow so you can flow. Right? So I pray that makes sense. And so, you know, I'm not necessarily going to pray, oh, Father, oh, you know, no, 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 no. You already have it because you have him. You have him. And so a lot of times we, we may look for the interpretation to look like and to come through and to sound like how we um, see other people do it. Your, the interpretation may come when you pray. Right? The interpretation may come in the scripture. You know, I always talk about when I prophesy, I literally see the scripture because that's how he trains. That's, that's how he, that's how he deals with me. It's through the word. I, I look at life through the lens of the word. Like I see the word, I make comparisons, you know, but that's how he does it with me. Right. And so he taught me how to submit through the scriptures. Right. So that's all you, if you have him, you have interpretation. I know it's, I just oversimplified it, didn't I? Because we never really think about it. If you have him, you have you have interpretation. If you have him, you have the fullest extent of the gift. Because the gifts belong to him. So what we're doing is we're we're fighting to rest. We're fighting to lean. That's what that's really what the war is. That's really what it is. It's just when we see great exploits or we see great demonstration, you see a person who's just submitted, submitted. Because at the end of the day, prophecy, it is God speaking. Prayer, it is Holy Spirit praying. (laughs) Right? Word of wisdom, that's God's wisdom. Word of knowledge, it's God's knowledge. Preaching, it's God's word. (laughs) It's all him. Right. So really, it's just it's just about chilling. It's like relaxing. It's putting on the linen garment garments before God and just ministering to God. And then you we just get more comfortable and more comfortable and more comfortable and more comfortable. Right. And so, you know, when it comes to, you know, God, I want more, you know, I always fill that blank in with God. I want more of you. Right. So if I'm if I'm never able to interpret another dream fine. But if I have you, it'll come out by hook or by crook, right? We'll pray it. It'll be prophesied. It'll be in the scripture by hook or by crook because I have you. So God, I want more of you. Like I, I really want you. You feel me? So just chill, just chill and watch. And as you just chill with God, let God develop that language on the inside of you. And just go with it and just flow with it, right? Just flow with him. And, and you'll see, you'll see just a bit. Sometimes we just make things so, you know what I mean? Just, just chill. God knows what he's doing in terms of us flourishing in his gift. Right? Amen, amen. Sister, I saw you tie. Did you say you wanted prayer? 
I could be lying. Please keep me honest. Because it went by so fast. Oh, my bad. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so let's pray for our sister. Father, in the name of Jesus, did you say what you want to pray for? Does it matter? Did you, did you have something specific? Specific? Yeah. I know people be like, well, a niece. If you're a prophet, you should know. Why? We're praying. I've been praying for you, men of God, right? Guys, I have been flowing the Holy Spirit. Don't, don't let people get you caught up in all that because that's psychic stuff. You should know what's wrong with me. Nah. Mm -mm. I shouldn't. And if you want something specific, then, you know what I mean? We pray about that. You know what I'm saying? People be like, give me a word about my son. I no, no, so I can't do that. All right, unless the Holy Spirit does, right? Um, all right, so we're praying for So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you for our sister. We thank you, Father, that the heaviness. Um, I, I'm not that deep. Um, we thank you, God, that the heaviness is even lifting right now. We thank you, God, that this word was tailor-made and constructed just for her. That from August to December, um, this man made calendar that she's in the day of the Lord and her son is in the day of the Lord. And so, Father, we thank you for the planting of the word in her soul. That, God, what you're speaking will not be taken. That what you're speaking, God, to her will not be ripped out. But God, what you have said and what you have breathed over her, we planted in prayer into her spiritual DNA. And so even right now in the power and the presence of God, it is impossible for you to be heavy unless you're heavy with the presence of God. But sadness and despondency must flee because you're in the presence of God and the arms of God and the arms of the word of God are wrapped around. Yes, the word has arms though, because if the word can speak, right? The word has arms and it's wrapping the, the word, the arms of the word is wrapping itself around you. And so, Father, we just pray and praise into your all-knowingness. We pray and praise into you having all power. We pray and praise into your beautiful and perfect providential will. You are so wonderful and amazing. And so, God, you have her son. His life and times are committed in your hands. And this process that her son is in, thank you, Father, that you, call, you gird mommy up. You gird her up because the enemy would wish, the enemy would would, that she would get low and down and she would get in despair and then her son would not be covered. But Father, thank you that you have a plan and that you have the sound of prayer and you have the sound of praise, the sound of praise in terms of what you told her about her son. And so, Father, thank you that this will be a day where the sound of that praise is released in her house and over her son. Thank you for a new song that she will sing, and it will be the word of the Lord, the tailor-made word of the Lord. I hear it uh, concerning her son and his future. We thank you that his future is well illuminated. We thank you that his future will not be robbed and pillaged and plundered. But we thank you, Father, that the word that you spoke over her son, so shall it be in the name and in the blood of Jesus. Now, Father, we thank you for peace upon peace upon peace to rest on our sister. And for every mother who is dealing with these sorts of issues. Every father who is dealing with these sorts of issues. You've got our children. And we trust you. We trust you. Well, she will not get sick. They will not get sick. They will not age. They will not become brittle. They will not crumble. And they will not fall to pieces. This is not the season for it. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I saw a couple of things people on here talk about jobs. Um, and, and jobs and interviews. I'm going to put those into a category. This word, I, Carlisle, you came on late, but this word is for you. I need you to pray this. I need you to understand that the Father is calling, calling and causing for you to get out of the boat. And he's going to rearrange some things. He's going to put some things before you. You know, God, I need a job in my industry. I saw you say that. 
How could you not get what is the Lord saying concerning that, right? Sometimes when we talk about getting out of the boat, that's different from riding in the boat. God is going to call and cause for some, for you to take some steps or to do some things that seem beyond you, right? That seem beyond you, right? And so, you know, whatever the Lord is saying um, in this time, in this season, yes, it's, it's yep, I guess I'm trying to say, stepping out in faith. You know, sometimes we're like, okay, God, da, 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 the Lord may be saying, well, I'm saying for you to, you know, start your own thing. I'm, I'm saying for you to, you know, create your own path. And you've had some some ideas. I see it. Like I see bursts of like light, like light bulb going off and on, kind of sort of. Um, you know, like inspirational idea. Like, well, maybe I should call like movie studios down in Atlanta and see if they need me to kind of decorate sets. And you didn't move on it. Do you think you can try that in your own soul? So whatever the Lord is, the, the Lord is saying some particular things, but deliverance is in your hand. You're not a beggar. Mm -mm. You're not desperate. Yeah, finding, definitely finding a need to fulfill, definitely finding a problem to solve. And that's exactly what you are, right? That's exactly what you are. You are a solution. You are a solution. Some people don't even know that they have the problem. Some, some people don't even know that they have need for you until you show up. Then they're like, oh my gosh, where have you been all my life? And so this is a season, remember, where you're coming to the end of yourself and you're starting at a new beginning. Amen. You're coming to the end, but you're coming into the new. Hallelujah. But um, in terms of interviews, there's you know, a couple of people, uh, interviews and jobs and multiple doors multiple offers. I need you guys to decree these things and to, you know, it's one thing we can sit here and I can pray my braids out and we could be speaking in tongues and haka waka waka shaka waka waka. But at the end of the day, what did the Lord speak and what do you believe that he spoke? Right? Because I can't like make you believe anything. Do you believe that the Father has said that I'm opening up multiple doors, not just one door, but multiple doors, and that you will have options? Do you believe that? If you believe that, you will decree it. You will decree to the multiple doors. You will decree a certain salary. You will decree certain benefits. You will decree it. It'll hit you in the, in the center of your belly. You know what I mean? Um, so so, so if, if I was to listen to your decrees, if I was to listen to what you're saying, I would hear what you believe. And so what are you saying? Do you believe that it's multiple doors? Do you believe that you will be choosing where you will go? Do you believe that opportunities, right? Opportunities. We say, God, you know, I don't even like saying open doors. Y'all know that. I believe when we talk about providential will, I believe that he's going to pour you into the door. He's going to pour you into, he made a garden. And then he took man and he set him in the garden. He made a garden. He created the whole world, but he made a garden. He made a place for Adam. He made a place and he took Adam and he put Adam in the place. He put Adam in the garden. He, why didn't he put him in the grove? <laughs> right? And so when we talk about that providential will, come on. Um... When you talk about the providential will of God, now I'm not, uh, multiple doors, multiple doors, that's cool, that's great, that's dandy. Okay, I want where you want to use me. I want where will I be most effective. I want to move from here to here because I want, come on, pour me just like you took Adam and you poured him into the garden and we see the authority in Adam activated because of the assignment. That's what I want. God, where is the garden? Where is the thing, the place, the people, the purposes? Are y'all seeing this? So this is bigger than me. This is bigger than what I want. This is bigger than my needs. This is God, it's your needs. God, what do you want? God, where do you want to go? God, what do you want to speak? I am just the vehicle. Pour me in. 
Pour me in, let's do this. And so that means that your life can take a major jump. If you're not ready to do that major transition because your head will spin. It will spin. But if you like, I'm ready. Like, I, I get it. One shot. This side of glory. Like, let's do it. I'm not playing games. Then you will see. Come on. If, if that makes sense, right? So God, I want the God door. I want the I want I want the tailor made. I want to I want to go where you saying I want I want to be. You know what I'm saying? You want there's some people that you 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 need to speak a word. There's some people who you need to introduce yourself to God. And so if I'm the vehicle, then where? Let's do this. Let's do this. Yep, the God door. The God door. Come on, the God door. Amen. So you know when you look at Genesis eight and Genesis nine. And we talk about the dominion and the replenishing and we talk about the fruitfulness and all of those things that is maintenance. And we understand the dread and the fear of your name. We understand that God is armoring you. God is, he's making you ready for your planting. He's making you ready for your, uh, for you being pushed into your assignment. Begin to decree into that. Begin to talk to God about his providential will. Begin to talk to God about his covenant. Begin to remind God and to bring him into remembrance of the people it is that God wants to set himself through you in front of. Watch your head spin. Hallelujah. I pray that makes sense. Megan, uh, I just, I just want to just run out of here. Come on. I'm telling you guys, multiple doors. If you, you know, for you guys who go to church and you, you know, li li listen to lives and Facebook and people and all kinds of stuff, it, it's no, it, it doesn't do good just to sit and listen. I mean, it's cool to sit and listen. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of the Lord, right? But when you're hearing, your faith should be growing so much that when you're done, your faith should be speaking, your faith should be moving, your faith should be doing, your faith should be working, your faith should be worshiping. Something's what do you believe? Because it moves you to action. It moves you to activity. It moves you. Amen. 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 So, um, yeah, um, tomorrow we won't be on. Um, we won't be on. I got to do the, um, some prophetic zooms tomorrow. Alexa with Alexis. Oh, and, um, next week, I guess we can talk about it now since I just stuck that in on you. So next week I'm gonna be in California. And when I get out of the sessions, the programs, it's going to be seven 30. So I don't know how that's going to work. Because if I wait to get on at like 6, 6.30, there, it'll be like 10.30, 11. So maybe I'll hop on a few days. It's work. It's I'm working. And pray or something. I don't know, but... Um, okay. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. If I say six 30 or seven, um, she said, can I come? Yeah. I, we, we, we are going to talk about doing them uh, for real. We are doing a retreat in California, encourage camps, and we're going to do one in Georgia. We are planning them for real. And when I say that, I mean, I'm starting to plan them like right now. Um, yeah. So I just want to put that out there. So I don't know how, I don't really know what that's going to look like. And I'm going to be out there Monday through Friday. So Monday and Friday, I won't be on at all. Because I'll be traveling. I don't know. I will work it out. And if, you know, I might just hop on and, you know, pray a little bit. And if, you know, nobody gets on, that's fine. You know, you could just kind of catch the replay or something. Um, but I just, I do want to be faithful with what we're doing. So when I come back more than likely we'll, we'll get on, on the weekend just for, you know, kicks and giggles to kind of make it up a little bit, but I just wanted to let you guys know, yay. So tomorrow we won't be on, but we will be on Thursday. Um, so please, 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 you know, engage with this word, you know, really, 
praise through and see what the Lord is saying. Okay. Amen. Amen. So I love you guys. I love you guys. And, um, we'll see each other on Thursday. Okay. Yeah. Watch the replay. Let me know what you think of it, man of God. I got your email too. You were on points. Spot on chap. Spot on bros. Are you still on? I just, I just did that horrible accent. Her kids make fun of me because I'd be like, yes, mate. Hi, mate. How are you doing, mate? And they're like, no, Anise, that's not how we sound. You sound like your country and something. Love you too, Denise. Are you laughing at me, Laura? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I don't think she's on. All right, she's laughing at me. All right, I love you guys. Okay, so we'll be we'll be on Thursday. Y'all have a good night and a good tomorrow. Love y'all. Is she? You, are you laughing at me? You're laughing at me? Hey, that was pretty good. Wait, you're laughing at me? I cannot believe I'm doing this on live feed. All right, it's time to go. Love y'all.